Unit 9, Day 2, Arts and Chords. Let's define a few terms first. A central angle is an angle whose vertex is at the center of the circle. So here we have this point P, the center of the circle, and this green angle is formed. This is the measure of the central angle. Now, whenever you have an angle inside of a circle, it cuts off a portion of the edge of the circle. That is called an arc. So a couple things regarding arcs. A minor arc is referred to an arc if the measure of that central angle that cuts it off is less than 180 degrees. So AB is called a minor arc of circle P. <clears throat> a major arc is an arc that has a central angle that is greater than 180 degrees. So this angle that goes all the way around point P this way, this is greater than 180 degrees. So major arc A, C, B is how you refer to it. So the other thing you need to know is when this is given in a problem, if two letters are given for the arc, it's always going to be the minor arc. In order to be a major arc, it needs to have all three letters, A, C, B, to tell you the order it goes in. Starting at A, go through C, and finish at B. The last term is a semicircle, and a semicircle is an arc that covers half of the circle. So if the central angle is equal to 180 degrees, then the arc would be a semicircle. Now this in the box is extremely important about circles, and it says that the measure of every circle is 360 degrees. Now that's found in two places. All of the central angles around the center of the circle add up to 360 degrees, and also all of the arcs around the edge of the circle add up to 360 degrees. Now when we're trying to measure arcs, the measure of a minor arc is the measure of its central angle. So here, if we have angle APB, and if the central angle measures 70 degrees, the arc it cuts off from A to B is also 70 degrees. Here's the arc addition postulate, and this tells us that the measure of an arc formed by two adjacent arcs is the sum of the measures of the two arcs. Now we've dealt with segment addition and angle addition postulates before. This is the same idea. So what this tells us is the measure of arc A B, C is going to be equal to the measure of arc AB plus the measure of arc BC. So you can add two adjacent arcs to get the sum of the two arcs together. So here we want to determine whether the arc is a minor arc, a major arc, or a semicircle of circle C. So AE, this should already give you a hint that two letters from A to E this is going to be a minor arc. FDE, F to D to E. Now it goes from F to E, and those are the ends of diameters. This is actually a semicircle. FA is going to be a minor arc. And BDA, B to D to A, again, those are ends of a diameter, so this is half, and it's a semicircle. I want you to pause. Try to label these next four and then check back with me and see if you got the right answer. Hopefully you got semi, major, minor, and minor. Now remember, generally minor arcs are always listed with two letters and major arcs are always listed with three. Semicircles could be listed as three or two, so just make sure you're careful with how many letters they use to label the arc. In this set of examples, it tells us that MQ, this line, and NR are diameters, and it wants you to find the indicated measures. The way that we do this, I think the easiest, is to find all of the angles and the arc measurements first, then you can write down the ones that you need. So to start off right here, we have a set of vertical angles, okay? Remember, those are angles opposite from each other from two intersecting lines. So this is going to be 70 degrees. Now, another thing you should notice is that here we have a line, and we know a line is 180 degrees, so this angle over here is going to be 110, because this one's 70. Now lastly, we have this angle is 30 degrees, and on this other side, 
we have that same line makes 180, this is 70, and this is 30. So that leaves us with this angle being 80 degrees. Now the last step before we can start answering is we need to use that theorem about how a central angle is the same as its intercepted arc. So if this is 110, this arc is 110. This angle is 70, this arc is 70. This is 30, so this is 30, 80, and lastly 70 again. This makes it a lot easier because when we're trying to answer these questions, now we can just add what we need. MN from M to N, this is 70 degrees. The next one, N to Q to R. Those go across the diameter, so this is 180 degrees. From Q to R, that's going to be 70. Arc Q, M, R. So we started at Q and ended at R. That's everything except for this 70 degree. So you can take 360, the entire circle, and subtract 70, which gives us 290. So this is 290 degrees. And then lastly, P to R to N. So again, same idea. Everything in the circle except for this 80 degrees. So that's 360 minus 80 to give us 280. Now go ahead and pause and find the measures of all of these arcs and then check back with me. Hopefully you got answers 110, 210, 110, 30, and 290. Here we want to find the measure of arc MN in each of these. And remember, MN is referring to the minor arc. So here we want to find the measure of arc MN. Now central angle is 45, so this arc is 45. Central angle is 85, so this is 85. So to find MN, we're just going to use the arc addition postulate, 45 plus 85, to give us a total of 130 degrees. Now this next one is a little trickier. What we want to do is we know the measure of this and this arc. We want to find the measure of arc MN. Now what we know is that if these central angles are the same, that means those arcs will also be the same. So the first thing we're going to do is take the 140 and 100 that we know, 140 plus 100, and that gives us a total of 240 degrees. Now we know the entire circle has to add up to 360. So if we take the total 360 and subtract 240, we're going to be left with 120. So 120 needs to be evenly split between these two arcs. So if we take 120 and divide it by 2, we're left with 60 degrees for each MN and NP. I want you to go ahead and pause and try this last one and then check back with me. Hopefully you found that arc MN is 165 degrees. Now don't be fooled. Remember, you can't use the picture for what it looks like. So don't think that MP and MN look like they're the same length, so they're both 160. You have to make sure you do the math. So check your work with mine if you didn't get 165 and see where you might have made a mistake. Next we want to talk about some theorems regarding chords. In the same circle, or in two congruent circles, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding chords are congruent. So what that means here is that we have this chord AB, and if that's congruent to chord CD, that means their respective arcs, arc CD and arc AB, are also going to be congruent. Here's another theorem about chords, and it says if a diameter of a circle, so it goes from one edge of the circle through the center all the way to the other side, if this is perpendicular to a chord, what happens to the chord is it gets bisected. So this diameter perpendicular to chord AC, this is going to be congruent to this one. This theorem is kind of like the converse of it, but the wording is slightly different. If you have this chord AC and it gets cut in half by this other chord 
and that second chord is perpendicular to it, then you can say that DB is a diameter of the circle. Here's another theorem, and it says in the same circle or in two different circles, two chords are congruent if and only if they are equidistant from the center. So we have to talk again about that definition of how to find the distance from a point to a line. So when we talked about this before, we said that you have to take a perpendicular segment from that point to the line. Then this segment FE would be the distance from point E to segment DC. Likewise, from point E to segment AB, the distance is the segment EG. So what this theorem says is these two chords, DC and AB, are going to be congruent if and only if this distance EF is exactly the same as that distance EG. Let's work out a couple examples. Um, in this first set, it asks us what can you conclude about the diagram, and we're going to use the postulates and the theorems that we just talked about to justify our answers. So when you're looking here, it says that segment AB is congruent to CD. So if these chords are congruent, that means that their arcs, AB, is going to be congruent to DC. So the way we write that, we take arc AB, and it has that curved arc above it, is going to be congruent to arc CD. When you take a look at this one, it tells us that arc AB is 140 and arc BC is 140. So this is kind of like the opposite of this one where the arcs are congruent so we can say that the chords AB is congruent to chord CB. So again the way we would write that AB and this is a segment this time is congruent to CB. Make sure you're being really careful about your arcs and your chords. And this next one it has this segment perpendicular to this one. And this first one also happens to be a diameter because it goes through the center. One of our theorems tells us that if that happens, we know that the segment AB gets bisected. So we can say that AD is congruent to DB. In this bottom set, we want to find the indicated measure for circle P. So in here, we're looking for the length of DC. That's this entire length for that chord. Now we're using that theorem again where we have a diameter and it's perpendicular to a chord. So that means it bisects the chord. So if this half is four, this half is also four, which gives us an entire length of DC to be eight. Here, we want to find the length of AD. Now this uses that theorem that talks about the distance the chord is away from the center. So if this distance is congruent to this one, that means this chord is going to be congruent to this one, so this is also 8. This last one isn't really using any of the theorems that we talked about today, but it does bring in your understanding of the radius and diameter of a circle. It's asking for the length of EC. And this is a chord that goes all the way through the center, which makes it a diameter. Now, this segment, the only measurement we have is DP, and that's 6. Since this goes from the edge of the circle to the center, this is actually the radius. Okay. Now, since EC is the diameter, remember, the radius multiplied by 2 gives us the diameter. So CP is also 6, and PE is also 6 which means the entire segment is 12. That's it for today. So make sure you look over your notes, watch the video again if you need to, and I'll see you in class.